Hi, everyone. Today I'm here with problem 2.73 from Young and Freeman's University Physics textbook. Let's get started. A watermelon is dropped from the edge of the roof of a building and falls to the ground. You are standing on the sidewalk and see the watermelons falling, see the watermelon falling when it is 30 meters above the ground. Then 1.5 seconds after you first spot it, the watermelon lands at your feet. What is the height of the building? Neglect air resistance. All right, so let's go ahead and draw a diagram to make some sense of this. So we know that the watermelon is dropped uh, from the edge of a roof of a building. So let's go ahead and that's for building, draw the building. And we see this watermelon. So we see this watermelon at this 30, 30 meters mark, that's gonna be 30 meters above the ground. And then 1.5 seconds later after we spot it, the watermelon lands at our feet. So this time it takes is 1.50 seconds and it lands at our feet. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a watermelon right at our feet. Here we go, we're gonna color that in and let's just give it some red and black seeds because watermelons have black seeds in them. All right. And what we know from this question is that we can we can use this the information from this part to extrapolate this distance and then what we can do is we can add up both distances together so we can add this 30 meters and then we can add this distance and we will get a total of whatever the height of the building is and what I mean by that is when we spot the watermelon right here it's falling at some speed v Right, so it's falling at some, let's say it's bi, right? Uh, let's just label this as part one. So, so it's falling at some vi initial and whatever the initial speed it's falling at over here is equal to the final speed of this distance right here, right? So if we label this distance right here as two, we know that the for one, for starters, the height of the building is one plus two, but we also know that the VI of one is equal to the VF of two. And we, no uh, other pieces of information and from that we can find the distance so let me just let's write down our known so that what i said is a little bit less abstract and makes a little bit more um sense with numbers and i'm going to write our knowns in blue just to color match so what we know is that the distance it's falling is 30 meters we know that the acceleration is 9.80 meters per second squared and we know that the time it takes to reach the bottom, right, is 1.50 seconds. We don't know what VI is, but that will be really helpful to find the VF. And the reason why we want to find the VF is that we, once we find the VF, we know what the acceleration is. And we also know that we're looking for the, um, di the distance right here. And we also know that we can determine the, um, sorry, we know that the VI over here is equal to zero meters per second, right? So when it starts, when we drop it from the top of the cliff, we also had that piece of information, so that's zero meters per second. Then we have the 9.80 meters per second again, per second squared, and then VF is going to be equal to VI one. 
and we don't know what D is, but once we do, we can find the height of the building. Do you know what this is? And I'm just gonna label this like VI of one, just to match with this one right over here. We don't know what that is, right? So just to go over that again, once we have our, what, using these parameters, we can find out what VI is. And the VI here is equal to the VI here. So these, at this point, it's the same speed. And then we can work backwards because we know what the initial speed is. If we drop anything, it doesn't have any speed. So it's going to start at zero. It's going to be in free fall. So 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we can use that to find D. So we're just going to be applying the five, four or five kinematic equation, four or five kinematic equations twice to determine our unknowns. So let's get started with that. So let's start with this right here. And I'm going to do that right here in blue. And the equation we want is D is equal to V I one T plus half of a T squared 30 is equal to V I one times 1.5 plus half of 9.8 and 1.5 squared. And I'm gonna plug that into my calculator. And I get VI is equal to 18.975 is equal to VI one times 1.5. And exactly, we get VI1 is equal to 12.65 meters per second. So we know that at this point, we found the speed. And we're also just going to plug that in right over here. So now for this portion over here, we have our VF, we have our VI, and we have our A. And now we're just looking for a D. So we can use another kinematic equation that has all these variables in it. And the one that comes to my mind is it's VF squared equals to VI squared plus 2AD. And if I plug in my values into here, well, actually I can isolate for D first. So it's gonna be VF squared minus VI squared over 2A is equal to D. And if I plug in my values, I get 12.65 squared over two times 9.8. And that is equal to 8.16 meters. So we know that this height over here is 8.16 meters. If we want to determine what the total height of the building is, it's going to be the height that we first determine and this additional height from where it first fell from or the top of the building, the top portion. And so I'm just gonna go back to this right over here. We're gonna add D1 and D2. And from that, D1 was 30, as we said, right here in the question and plus 8.16 that is equal to 38.16 meters and that is the height of our building in our final answer thank you so much for watching if you have any questions please feel free to leave them in the comments you can also send me an email from the email that's in the description feel free to like and subscribe if this is helpful please and See you next time. Thank you so much for watching.